and six thirty in order. Please rise and join the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. responding to uh, are for COVID-related cases. 
so that's just kind of where we're at in our local communities. With that uh, quick diversion uh, of information, uh, the, uh, this past month, um, we had looked at, uh, prior to some all of this beginning with, uh, with the current crisis, uh, refinishing some of the, uh, or, yeah, I guess refinishing the, the covering on the chairs in the fire department training room. I sent you a photograph that was taken of the condition of the, of the current chairs, and to say it was abysmal is um, an understatement if you look at that photograph. The foam padding was literally hanging out the sides of the chairs. They were just worn. As far as uh, I can recall, those chairs may actually have been bought with the building, so that means they've been there since 1989-ish. Uh, so I think they uh, certainly used a, a useful part of their life. Um, the frames on the chairs are good, and uh, we can have those chairs recovered, uh, which is the most cost-effective way to replace them, as opposed to replacing the entire chair. We're recommending that we replace uh, 24 of those chairs, uh, coverings, at a cost of $2,155.24 by Next Tech, Next Tech Professional Services, uh, which is a workplace and design uh, solution firm. So with that, uh, we would request the board to consider that as a motion. Any other questions? No, I have not. This was not included in the original budget, but you, this was just something we decided to do. So, uh, Mr. Clifford, I have a, there, there is a, I, I can't answer that question, you know. uh, I did not develop the initial budget for the fire department. Uh, in looking through the notes that are available from the initial budget for the fire department, you as a board have historically approved equipment replacement, maintenance, capital improvement, things of that nature. But I don't have any background since I didn't create that budget as to what those dollars were going to be used for. Well, it makes some difference. I can, I can share with you there's ample money in those accounts to uh, cover the cost. Uh, that, that I just didn't know if it was included, Jeff. I'm going to make the motion to approve it anyway. I just uh, just was curious if it was included. But that's all. Make a motion. We accept the bid from Next Tech at $2,155.24 to re condition the chairs uh, at the fire department. I'll second. I have a motion by Tristan Clifford, supported by Treasurer Hano. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Letter B, fire department computer purchase proposal. So uh, the board is scheduled tonight to consider the uh, purchase of three mobile computers for vehicles to be used for first response uh, at the Lennox Township Fire Department. This, I understand, has been a goal of the department for some time and was budgeted for uh, in, uh, in last year's uh, budget. The, uh, we've done part of the work on this when last month or the month before, I believe the township approved us putting the modems in the three vehicles uh, so that we'll, that will have the mobile computers to now uh, go with them. Those modems uh, were purchased, they were installed by the county uh, communications department and radio department uh, about a month ago, and then we set about getting the bids for the uh, Panasonic Toughbook uh, style computers, which are organized for the kind of work that uh, fire departments uh, do uh, day in and day out. Um, we, we did, because this is a larger purchase, obtain three bids for this. Uh, the bids came from uh, a company called CDWG, which is uh, specialized in government uh, uh, IT uh, equipment. Uh, we got one from Tower Computer Services, which the EMS uh, currently uses for some of its uh, purchases. And we uh, received a, a third bid from um, High tech, which I know the township has used here for uh, its, uh, its purchases, uh, some of its computer purchases in the past. The least expensive of the bids was with CDWG uh, in the amount of $10,980 for, uh, for the three devices. And so I would uh, request a motion to move forward with the purchase of the uh, three computers. I'll 
back to 2000. Um, so we, we pretty much got 20 seasons out of it. Uh, I think we really got a money script out of this unit. It has served us very well, um, but it is pretty much worn out. Um, unfortunately, this unit does also have the bagger unit that we use for cleanup at uh, some of our locations uh, spring and fall year. Uh, so because of the change in model, we would not be able to retrofit. Plus, that is also worn pretty well as well. Uh, one thing I am asking to add to this unit uh, would be solid front tires uh, to help avoid uh, dealing with constant flat tires. Same dealer, basically the same unit uh, that we have, it's just a newer model. Um, government pricing on this unit for an Xmark Laser Z 16 inch cut uh, with the bagger would be a total of $11,535. I don't have any. I make a motion that we have uh, approved the purchase of the um, Lexmark mower, Lexmark mower in the amount of $11,535. I'll second. I have a motion by Court Panel, supported by Treasurer Hamilton. Is there any discussion? Yes, those are the two free ones. 
Right, we're just paying for two. So, right. Paying so, for, yes, they added two. Well, the two free ones and then we're paying for the additional two okay. for the Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the Department of Roads from Macomb County for the dust control for 2020 using Macomb County for two applications for free and two more through road maintenance work for the total amount of 26656 per application, if needed. A second. Motion by Trustee Gurley, supported by Clerk Candell. Any other discussion? Questions? Second clerk will call, please. Gurley. Aye. Candell. Aye. Trombley. Aye. Clifford? Aye. Connell? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Letter F, 2019-2020 budget amendments. Okay, I am um, working with Jeanette. We got into taking care of working on the budget, and um, there were a couple of things that needed to be corrected. So you have in front of you, a list of three items. I, I do need them in three separate motions, so we'll look at the first one. Somehow we missed building revenue into the building department in the budget last year, so um, I did my best guess estimate based on what we have brought in to the building department so far in permits and added those line items. This was after a phone call with Karen Shafiq, so this is an approved way of doing it. So. Building permits, we added $80,000. Plumbing permits, we added $8,000. Electrical permits, we added $25,000. And mechanical permits, we added $15,000. That's all under revenues. So, I need a motion for that first one. Is that your, is that your motion? I will make a motion that we amend the budget to show the following amounts added to revenue in the building department. 80,000 in building permits, 8,000 in plumbing permits, 25,000 in electrical permits, and 15,000 in mechanical permits. Thank you. Second. I have a motion by Clerk Kendall, supported by Trustee Gurley. Any other questions or discussion regarding that? Clerk, will call please. Kendall. Aye. Gurley. Aye. Connell. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Trombley. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. My second item is, um, actually it's an item that when I put the budget in last year, I simply put it on the wrong line. So it was showing uh, restricted lateral benefit fees of $1,650,000. That should have been in sales. That's in O&M uh, water. So basically I removed 1650000 from restricted lateral benefit fees and added it to sales. That's your motion. That is my motion. Thank you. I'll second. I have a motion by Clerk Gandell, supported by Treasurer Connell. Any other discussion, questions? Can the clerk once again, please? Gandell. Aye. Connell. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Trombley. Aye. Gurley. The last item under budget amendments is a correction under the treasurer's office. All of the um, deputy's wages for tax specialists were going into, her wages weren't distributed properly, I'll just put it that way. So I removed $11,430 from tax specialists and put it under our accounts receivable clerk. make a motion that we accept the budget amendment redistributing the wages in the treasurer's office from tax specialist to accounts receivable clerk. Second. I have a motion by Clerk and Bell supported by Treasurer Allen. Any other questions or discussion? Clerk, please. Kendall. Aye. Connell. Aye. Trombley. Aye. Gurley. Aye. Clifford. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. I know it's a little late in the agenda. I know that's miserable like that. Number G, set 2020 2021 budget public hearing date. Normally, we do our public 
hearing for our budget and the June meeting. Jeanette, do you think we'll be ready for that? Mr. White to 
have to, if somebody came in there and used or, or pull up or paid a bill or whatever they're going to do in, inside that office, if they had to use the restroom, are you obligated to provide that? I am, uh, I am unaware of any uh, absolute obligation you would have to allow the public to um, use the restroom outside of, and, then, and maybe, I don't mean to keep passing the buck, but I, I, I don't know if the attorney would want to comment. Outside of if there was a restroom need that also somehow met an ADA, uh, an Americans with Disabilities Act kind of need, uh, you probably would have to make certain that you uh, allowed that person to then use the restroom. Outside of that, for the general public, I don't believe there's any obligation for you to allow them to use the public restroom. I didn't think so, but I just, I thought maybe you were maybe possibly Sean, but no, I didn't, you know, because if somebody walks in, you're going to be funded with that. Oh, can I use the restroom? Oh. Yeah, I would, uh, I would discourage that in, in all cases, except, except for an issue of possibly ADA. Yeah. That's why we left the porta potties outside. Right? Yeah, Our new restroom facility is, is not completed. We are going to keep that locked down. We are going to limit um, people coming into this part of the building. Um, we, we want to try to keep it as safe as we possibly can. Oh, I agree. I, I totally agree. We talked about that the other day. But exactly. I just didn't know if somebody walks in, you're going to be funded with that question. How are you going to handle it? That's all. Good. This is for the attorney. Could they put a note up? Like at my restaurants, we have notes up that say no public restrooms at this time. Absolutely. So that people are aware when they walk in, they cannot use the bathroom. Absolutely. That's right. I'm going to so as well. Now, also, on, on top of this measure that we're asking for approval tonight, too, we will be increasing uh, our cleaning in the building and until uh, we, we figure this out. Uh, we're going to be taking it week by week. Consulting Mr. White for standard protocol procedure and probably will institute a safety briefing for everybody the first day back to work. I think that covers it. Yeah, I yeah, believe so. We can cover everything else with the employees under the safety briefing. We have uh, developed for the township a, a written protocol, if you will, very broadly uh, addressing the issues that the governor has put out in her executive order, simply saying we have a written plan for our employees. Uh, and that that can be amended via memo uh, going forward, uh, simply because um, this is this is changing still. Uh, it's not changing by the hour anymore, but still sometimes changing by the day. And so we want to be very flexible in what we put out to our employees in writing. But we do uh, I do have a, a draft in front of the board uh, for them to, for them to consider before we return, have the employees return to work. It just broadly indicates that we'll be meeting the. Um, Spirit and intent of the governor's executive order with regards to the safety of our employees. Thank you. And I, one other thing, real quick, I want to thank everybody. This is these are tough times. Everybody's, even though we're not doing a lot, everybody's still busy. And we have a lot of concerns to cover, and everybody's been doing great. Fantastic work together. I can't say enough about our EMS and our fire, our first responders, and our employees in the township. Everybody that's kept working, and, and we are still open for business by telephone and special appointment only. We're keeping it going, and we're going to get through this, and we're going to be better than ever before, and we're going to hit the ground running as soon as we possibly can. But the safety, the safety, and I first started. Yes. I have a question because um, I don't know that I've talked to anybody about this. It just came to me. Have we given any consideration to? some type of shielding on the on the cubicles that are in the middle. We've got Wendy, we've got Christine, and actually Karen Culp sits at hers quite often. Do, does, do any of them need additional shielding there? We have barriers that exist on them now, so it's something that I think is going to Yeah, on three sides, like but they're open on one. Right, so they, they have an entrance on each one, but typically the entrance is face away from each cubicle. But once again, the parents have a caution. I think we'll have Mr. White check them out. Yeah, we can take a look at it. Generally speaking, uh, you know, the rule remains that you should uh, maintain six feet of social distance, which I tell people really means 12, because everybody, uh, you know, misjudges six feet. So I, I, I err on the side of doubling that when, uh, when talking to a lot of folks to ensure we have enough room. Uh, what I suggested was in, in offices that have doors, 
uh, when staff is working in those offices, those doors remain closed. Uh, you know, and, and when somebody comes in and is going to be within that six to uh, 12 foot distance away, that they in fact put their mask in. Um, with regards to your cubicles, I can certainly check to see what some others are doing, but as I envision those, uh, generally speaking, there's a lot of space between those, even when the, the employee is sitting facing forward in those. So if we uh, even simply did something like mark on the floor a, a 12 foot distance and make sure the employees understand that if somebody's going to get within that space and needs to, uh, that they that both employees put their mask on, uh, you know, to get to get in that space. Um, you know, I think that, that social distancing is a huge part, and, and when you can't maintain it, getting your mask on is the next best thing. Also, too, um, any employees uh, that have uh, need, uh, special attention regarding this virus, that they uh, need to work at home, and they need to do that with them.